In this video, we're going to unbox the Amazon Kindle Scribe and talk about Kindle accessibility for Amazon e-ink display devices. Are they a good fit if you're blind or visually impaired? Let's talk about it. Hi everyone, it's Carrie from Carry On Accessibility. If you're into technology and accessibility, hit that subscribe button. So, a few weeks ago, I purchased an Amazon Kindle Scribe and I did a little unboxing video. So it's been about a week, but I wanted to show you a little bit of that unboxing. You can always skip ahead using the video chapters if there's something specific that you want to learn about. Hello everyone, sorry if I sound a little bit congested, I'm trying to recover from a cold, but today I'm going to unbox the Kindle Scribe. It's a sort of new product and I wanted to check out its accessibility, so I went ahead and got it on Amazon and let's see how to unbox it. Um, one thing about Amazon products is they are always like interesting to unbox and not because it's like a premium unboxing experience. It's just like, where do I open it? Um, on the front here, you'll feel like the smooth side. It's actually glossy where the picture of the Kindle Scribe is and you can actually feel the pen. That's a kind of nice touch. I really kind of like that. And it feels glossy like the screen would be glossy, except I think it has a matte finish for the screen. So yeah, I guess it's just to have that um, contrast between the rest of the box. So on the back, let's see, we have this thing here that it feels kind of like a big envelope, you know, those mailing envelopes. Um, I think that there's a little tab here. I think this is what we pull. We're just gonna give it a try. There's a little tab on the side. I don't know if I'm supposed to start on one side or the other, or if it matters, I'll just pull. Oh, <laughs> great, <laughs> it just came off. Um, let's put that on the table for now. Let's try again. Let's try on the other side. Hopefully the microphone caught that. And now, it opens up like a manila envelope and there's a piece of cardboard I can feel um, oh this cardboard like is a flap that comes up and I can pull that and slide out this the device okay I feel like something's gonna fall all right so we have the box I'm gonna put that on the table here and now we have a piece of really, really cheap cardboard. And what does that say? It says hello. And I think that's like some kind of paperwork. Not sure. And then there seems to be something in the bottom of the box. Okay. So it's a wire and, and a piece of paper. Oh, it's a rolled up piece of paper. It's actually the pen. It's the pen inside a piece of paper. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's, wow. Okay, great packaging, Amazon. So here's the wire. I'm happy that it is a USB-C. Let's see, here is the pen. When the wire is in here, the pen does not slide out, but when the wire comes out, the pen slides out. Now we'll put that to the side. Here's the pen. Oh, it feels pretty nice. It kind of feels like the S pen, honestly. Okay, it's pretty sturdy. It feels like a a real pen. So here is a couple different pens. Um, this is, oh wow, I had to really look at it. This is the scribe pen. And this is like a, what is this? A, um, this is just like a blue, like push pen ink pen and this one is a 20 sort of 2020 pen and it's a little thinner but it's definitely thicker than a pencil I would say that's pretty nice and what we've all come to see is this this is the Kindle scribe and we're gonna find out how to open it. So 
There's a flap here. Okay, I guess I'll just pull it. Ooh, it ripped. I don't know how to open this. Am I supposed to rip this? <laughs> okay, I, I don't like this unboxing experience. This is terrible. <gasps> okay, wow, just look at that. It's like completely ripped. <laughs> I thought, okay, I think they could have done better. Um, and now, here it is. Which way do I hold it? I can't see any of the text on here. I think it might be like this. There seems to be a bigger bezel on the left side where I guess most people will hold it with their left hand. Though I am left-handed, so I would actually flip it upside down and hold the bigger bezel with my right hand. So let's see, does this, there's some kind of like dot right here. That's interesting. I wonder if that's for a case or accessory or something, or, or if you place it on the table. Now this, maybe this is metal? I don't know what that is, the back. I'll have to look at the specs. Now the USB-C port is on the right long edge. There's also a one button on the side here, right next to the power input. All right, I don't know. Let's see, I've never used a Kindle before. E-ink has always been really hard for me to see, so I'm really interested in how this is going to be and if I can make it more accessible for me and try voice view because I've never tried it before. So I did press and hold that side button and now it says Kindle. And now the next screen asks for something and I really can't see anything. But what I did find out is the bottom should say accessibility. Um, so I'm gonna try, I think I see something black down there. I cannot read it at all. So I guess I'll tap on that. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna have to pull out my magnifier and, and read it that way. Let's get we zoom on my phone and see what it's asking. Did I tap on accessibility? Okay, so yeah, accessibility is at the bottom. Um, voice view, provide spoken feedback when you touch items on the screen. This feature is only available in English. Okay. Okay, I tapped on accessibility again. Or maybe I didn't tap it before. Or maybe I did. Okay, when I tap it, it only shows voice view and nothing else. Maybe if I scroll down? That is only accessibility? What? <laughs> Where's all the font and like size? This is not, a screen reader is not the only accessibility. All right, so here is the Kindle Scribe. Once you have it set up, this is what it's going to look like. This is the home screen. It's basically the Kindle store. So if you swipe down from the top of the screen, it brings you to your quick settings. From here, you can change if you want it to be dark mode or light mode, change your brightness, the warmth of your device. So like the backlight, okay, you can make it um, have a browner tint to it. So let's see, I'm not sure if the camera will really pick it up. Hold on, let's try it. Okay, so that's the brownish tinge. It's kind of hard for the camera to really pick it up, but you can really see it when you're in person that it has kind of that like sepia, like brownish tone to the light. If you move it to the opposite direction, all the whites are very, very white, almost blue. The backlight I think is pretty bright and there's just a pretty big flaw when it comes to e-ink displays. The touch is definitely not as responsive and I feel like I always have a lot of trouble tapping right where it wants me to and it feels like you really have to get your finger right in the middle. I feel like there's a lot more margin of error when you're using a smartphone versus um, this Kindle. You can also get to settings from here. There's an all settings button if I can figure out how to tap it. From here, we wanna go down to accessibility and check out what's available. 
and there's only three different options in here. There's voice view screen reader, which we'll come back to. There's display size. So if we tap on there, I already have the display size to large. The only other option is standard. That makes everything a lot smaller. There's unfortunately no font sizing for the actual user interface. Now, when it comes to books, you can make that font size pretty big, but not for the UI, not when you're trying to look for books, not for all the little icons that are floating around on the screen. It's honestly really hard for me to see. Another inherent problem with e-ink displays is these flashes on the screen. So if I go ahead and press the back button, you'll see that there's a big white flash on the screen as the e-ink display refreshes. And this is really good for battery, but honestly for me, where I'm kind of light sensitive, glare is a real issue for me. Like all that flashing is just taxing to my eyes and it's just, not the most pleasant experience. That happens with all e-ink displays, so it's not limited to like Amazon Kindles, but just the nature of e-ink displays. The third option in accessibility settings is invert black and white. This is basically dark mode. So if you turn that off, everything goes to white mode or light mode. And if you turn it back on, it's basically dark mode. So we wanna go to the top where it says voice view screen reader, and we're gonna select that one and we're going to turn it on right there. Now it's going to look for a Bluetooth device because the Kindle Scribe and all the Kindle e-readers don't have a speaker. So here I have a really old speaker. Where's the on? There we go. It's an old jam box. <laughs> I'm surprised it's still alive. Let's see if I can get it to pair. Voice view there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna two fingers on the screen when you I'm holding it. Kindle. We've detected a pairable okay, Bluetooth it's not working. device. Let's try again. By I'm holding my Hold fingers. Fingers. A few minutes later. Okay, that was kind of annoying. I had to go back and do it again, but that's all right, I guess. Voice view is a screen reader for Kindle and Kindle Fire tablets and things like that, and it's similar to Talkback but with all so much stripped away. It's worse than how Samsung has separated TalkBack and made their own version of TalkBack. Voice view is so stripped down that it's so limited. So you can swipe to the right and to the left to go to next and previous items. Voice view screen menu, but close. Voice view tutorial. I'm Learn swiping right. Voice speech rate. Adjust the speed of voice view spoken feedback. From just trying the device, there is actually no other voice. This is the only voice. I think her name is Sally. And we can change the speed, however, and also the volume. Volume. Adjust speech rate. Adjust the speed of voice view spoken feedback. Current setting 1x. We can double tap. speed back. I can also move my finger two, around two, the screen. Three, four X, fastest. One dot twenty-five X. So let's radio try button, this selected. one. I'm gonna double tap. One dot twenty-five X radio button selected. Okay, and now it also has the talk back back gesture, which is a down and to the left. So we can go down left. Voice view screen reader back. Button. We're back in the voice view settings. Let's see. Voice view screen reader menu. Button close. Voice view screen reader tutorial. Edit the speech rate. Volume. Adjust the set Bluetooth devices. Add. And that's it. You have Bluetooth devices. Volume. volume speech rate. Speech rate. Speech rate tutorial. Tutorial. Button. Voice view screen reader. And we have the voice view toggle. That's literally all the settings. Tutorial also doesn't tell you the read from next item gesture, which is down right. You can do granularity control only for words and characters, which is a swipe up and down in a continuous motion. Character V. And then you can do a down up. Character V. And you can swipe up and down to go between the characters. O, I, C, E, V, I, E, W, space. Let's go back to the home. So I'm gonna do a back 
gesture. Accessibility, back, button, mid settings. Your recent titles. Okay, we're back in the home. I had to do a few back gestures and now let's go ahead and open a book. Our solar system, an exploration of planets. Okay, yeah, let's go to this one. And planets, planets around the other stars in our galaxy. Okay. Yes, there are. Now stop, fact, I'm just gonna tap the screen. Double tap and hold for more options. The two finger tap doesn't really work to stop speech, but you can move your finger around, explore by touch, swipe left and right, but that's only going to take you between words. Have been option searching for other option earth -like planets. If you want it to read from where it is, you want to go uh, do a angle gesture, which is a down right. So it's like drawing an L on the screen in one continuous motion planets around other stars in our galaxy. They've already identified about 2,500 such systems in the Milky Way. Now let's try to change some of the settings. I'm going to put my finger right here on the left edge where it says boop and it has that little beep and I'm gonna double tap there. Back to home button. Now we've got the toolbar open. The reason why I put my finger over there is because if you touch a word and you double tap on the word, it will bring up options for that word and not the main toolbar. I haven't been able to figure out a way to easily open the toolbar without um, that kind of workaround. So let's see what's in this toolbar. View options, button, go to, button, notes and highlight, bookmarks, search, button, menu, button, our solar system. Quick actions is basically the action menu that swipes down kind of like the notification shade on Android and that's where you can get to your settings. The other thing is that the icons are so small it's hard to explore by touch even though you know where in the general location of where the buttons are it's like challenging to have to do that and to have to find it because it is a bigger screen. View options here, double we'll double tap. tap. Menu, themes, radio button, selected. From here we can pick a th font, theme, radio button, font, select, layout, layout radio, more, radio more button, custom. custom. Radio button. So let's see what is in themes. We have, oh great, I'm exploring by touch and it doesn't read anything. Reading progress page in book, show clock while reading, off. Oh. There we go. I can book swipe to it. Names of other books mentioned. About this book, show information about the book when open for the f reading progress okay. page. Font, radio button, So let's go to selected. font. You can choose your font Increase family. Increase now zero of five. Button. Increase bold now zero of five. Button. So let's make this Increase bolder. Increase bold now one of five. Increase bold now two. Increase bold now three. Increase bold now four. Of. Increase bold now five of five. Button. There you go. Now it's really bold. Let's put this font. font. Really. Go back to font tab. Button. To a serif Double tap font. to select Amazon Ember Radio Baskerville Ray Bookerly Radio Button Selected Casalia Casalia Condensed Radio Let's Booker, try Helvetica Radio, Helvetica. Helvetica Radio Button selected. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the back gesture. Identified. Double <laughs> tap and hold for more options. The problem is if you do the back gesture, it doesn't take you back to the font settings, it actually takes you back to the book. So and closes the toolbar. So I'm gonna open that toolbar again. Back to home button. View options. View options. Go back to font tab button. Oh, there we go. Double go back screens. to font tab. And now font family Helvetica button. Okay. Decrease bow now five. Increase bow now five. This Decrease is... size now thirteen or fourteen. Okay, this is not very easy. Okay. Increase size now thirteen to fourteen. Button. Okay. Increase size now there fourteen to fourteen. So Button. this is actually the maximum boldness and the maximum font size. And for me, this is something that I can read, but it's definitely still not all that easy. Especially considering the contrast of e-ink displays. Um, it's it's just not big enough, honestly. I feel like on the actual Kindle app, you can make it a lot bigger than the Kindle devices. And now on my Pixel, this is the size. It's slightly bigger than the Kindle. And even with the Kindle Scribe's bold feature, it 
it's still easier to see on the pixel. If you did want to go back to your home page, you can just do the back gesture again for a voice view. Double tap um, and, and do it again. Search button. And now you are back in your home page. That's pretty much it for accessibility. On the Kindle Paperwhite editions, even the signature ones, they don't even have an option for larger display size, which still isn't enough for me, even if I set it to large, <laughs> but at least it does have something. The user interface is impossible for me to use without voice view because I just can't see it. There's no way that I can see it without a CCTV or without a magnifier. Um, the whole time that I was filming, I had my camera on a tripod and I was holding my phone with a magnifier trying to really zoom in so that I could see and that's the only way that I could use the actual Kindle Scribe or any Kindle e-ink device. Basically this just has two accessibility options and it's really disappointing. I did get an Amazon Kindle Fire tablet, which is an Android, sort of Android-based tablet. It's based on Fire OS, which is Amazon's version of Android. It really suffers from a lack of accessibility. It does have a few more voice view options, and if you're interested, maybe I can make a video about that, but it's just so limited. It's nothing compared to TalkBack. It's honestly really frustrating that Amazon really strips it down and takes away a lot of the functionality for TalkBack, um, a lot of the other multi-finger gestures, a lot of the capabilities that come along with TalkBack. I guess the price is pretty low, but it's just really disappointing. With such a big screen, I think the font in a book still needs to be larger. I love the fact that you can change the boldness. That's pretty cool. I would actually really like to see that on the Kindle app. Not everybody has the same vision I do. I would say if your visual impairment is pretty mild, if you can still see pretty small print and you just want a little bit more help when you're reading, I think that it could be a great option for you. I know it came with a pen and I didn't even talk about the pen at all. It's just was so hard for me to use the device. I honestly just didn't use the pen at all. I'll have to send this back. It's honestly not that useful for me. It's hard for me to see. It's just not great when it comes to using a screen reader and so there's really no point in me using it. I'm hoping that Amazon will improve their accessibility. That's the accessibility on the Kindle Scribe, basically on the Kindle. Let me know if there's any other devices that you'd want me to check out and try and see if it's accessible. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, give it a thumbs up below and I will catch you in the next one.